G'day friends, fans, followers and subscribers of Latch.fit TV and welcome to episode 5. For this episode, I teamed up with the owner of the insanely well-equipped world gym I've got the pleasure of training my clients at and professional natural bodybuilder Iron Ryan Laos to work through an intense training session in which we focused primarily on back width. We pre-exhausted our lats in isolation using partial range dumbbell pullovers, being careful to stretch deep and maintain constant lat tension. My clients and I almost always begin back with sessions with an isolation exercise to tax our lats without taxing our biceps, brachialis and other smaller muscles so we can rest assured that our lat size isn't being hindered by smaller auxiliary muscles that simply aren't as hardy as the latissimus dorsi. Our second movement and first compound movement of our back width day was the one-armed lat pull-down, which is awesome for latissimus development so long as you arch your upper back, drive up with your chest, elevate through your abdomen, lengthen your abs, lengthen the distance between your sternum and belly button as you pull down. You'll note that both Ryan and I attempt to explode through the concentric or pulling phase of this movement. Then we return the weight slowly and with control into a really exaggerated stretch while turning away to maximize our range of motion. Then, utilizing the aforementioned torso positioning, we explosively drive the weight down and squeeze our lats hard at the peak contraction point. As we reach an end with this exercise, you'll note that both of us start to jerk around and yank the weight down with whatever we can. We're trying to extend the set beyond failure using whatever we have available. It's a common theme you'll notice throughout this training session. Towards the end of the set, both of us loosen up our form and start jerking it around a little bit because the only other option we'd have at that point would be to have the weight spotted through a training partner, but in this case, the training partner, me, was filming. <laughs> Next, we supersetted hammer strength pullovers with hammer strength high rows. Now remember to align your shoulder joint with the axle of the hammer strength pullover machine to avoid injury. Push your elbows into the pads instead of pulling with your hands to drive the weight explosively through the concentric phase of this exercise. And always be sure to stretch and get a full range of motion like Ryan's doing here. From there, I want you to run from the pullover machine to the hammer strength high row and begin immediately so you get the benefit of two distinct movements in the same set. Keep your rib cage planted firmly against the chest pad and don't crunch down with your abs as you pull like I see almost everyone who does this exercise doing, which means you won't be able to use crazy heavy weights. Once you reach the peak contraction point, make sure you do an isometric hold, squeeze your lats and pinch your shoulder blades together hard. Then control the weight through the eccentric phase of the movement and get a deep stretch as your arms extend like Ryan's doing here. I love supersetting an isolation move like a pullover and a compound move like a row on back width day for a crazy pump and mind-boggling delayed onset muscle soreness. Finally, we gathered what little remaining strength we had left and moved to the dumbbell rack for bench-supported dumbbell rows. Now, we obviously used a bench on these ones, but you should use whatever apparatus you feel these best on, from a bench to the dumbbell rack or simply your own knee. I used to love those when I was young. We keep our legs spread wide to keep our hips as flat as possible and minimize torso twist, oblique involvement. Although, as you see here, we were both fairly tired. So once we had failed with good, solid form, we did what was necessary to prolong each set until the bitter end, using our legs and core to gain momentum and squeeze out a few final, agonizing reps to finish the workout with an unbelievable posterior torso pump. I've worked at Ryan's World Gym on Castle Ray Street in Sydney CBD for a while now, and through both training with and working near him, I've learned some key things that I've surmised are responsible for his professional success. Ryan's an excellent representative of Australian bodybuilding. He's always polite to members and guests who stop to ask him questions around the gym. He's notably driven and at the gym from an early hour every day. As the months have gone by, I've noticed he's always learning, always keeping an open mind towards new information. He's one of the nicest blokes I've ever met. But when that guy starts a set, it is all systems go. He unleashes his anger on the weights, using rest, pause, partial reps, and other intensity techniques to extend his sets beyond the initial failure point. He's got a brutal strength to weight ratio, and he keeps his rest periods incredibly brief for a bodybuilder. 
Most of all, he's consistent. I'd say the key to attaining a physique like Ryan's or any physique worthy of note is consistency. A powerful physique is built through sustained effort, day in, day out. I hope you've enjoyed episode five of Blatch.fit TV. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you all next time.